Hello from Eastern Neston and welcome to the Lombard Tricity Junior Kickstart. Uh, I suppose really the weather here, well, it could be a little kinder to the 36 qualifiers who've come here for the three heats and two finals that we'll be running in the next four programmes. It's very muddy, it's very wet, very slippery on the wheel for the riders and I think it could provide quite a lot of problems for them on the course. Now the format for junior kickstart, we have a senior group which is aged 12 to 15 and we have a junior group aged up to 12. That's at the qualifying date for the competition. And the course, which I think is pretty difficult, has been set by my old mate Mick Andrews, former World Trials champion. You haven't done the kids any favours, have you, Mick? No, it's very difficult today, with it being wet. But in fact, for the first time, we have had regional heats for Junior Kickstart all over the country. Is this really going to lift the standard of the, uh, of the competition? Yes, because uh, last year we had local riders, now we have riders from all over the country, and we have, in fact, the best riders. Now, all, all these young riders in the, uh, in the individual heats, they've been able to, well, pit their skills against exactly the sort of obstacles that they're going to come up against today. Yes, and uh, more or less a lot of the obstacles are the same as what they had before. Well, in fact, uh, we've just come up to what could well be the one obstacle that's going to be the most difficult of the lot. We're calling this the gun barrel, right? The gun barrel, yes. This is one of the more difficult ones, yeah. All right, well, the runners and riders, we've got six in the first senior heat. That's what you're going to see first. Here's a complete breakdown of who's taking part. Stephen Hole, who's 15, from Cambridgeshire. Lansingham, he's also 15, from Lancashire. Tony Wilson, 14, from West Yorks. Stephen West, also 14, from Dorset. Bruce Hamer, from Clewitt, he's only 13. And Matthew Lefebvre, from Buckinghamshire, he's 15. So Stephen Hole on the starting line, number one, hoping to be one of the two qualifiers that we'll have from this heat for final. As promoter Nick Britton starts him off, and straight away he's into the seesaw. He's riding the largest machine in this heat. It's a 250cc bull tackle. But it should be very suitable for these conditions. And he really flew over there. That gap between those two logs, very tight, isn't it? Very, very tight, yes. It's just a machine's length wide. As in the senior event, there are 20-second penalties for failing to get out through the exit gates of some of these obstacles. And no foot faults apart from the limbo, which he's just approaching now. I think you've seen this before, so you'll know how it operates now. Well, that's a pretty good performance. And coming up now to what Mick uh, Andrews feels is the hardest of all the hazards on the course. And he's done it beautifully. That's a very good that ride is a too. perfect example of how to do it. And the bunny hop. This is a marvellous start. Tremendous confidence. Just 15 years old from Huntington in Cambridgeshire. One obstacle to go. This we call the rollback. This is a foot fault. There it is. 20 seconds. He's unlucky with that. So he's got one 20 second fault to add. Makes 92.6. A good ride by Stephen Hole. This is the Lancashire lad from Ramsbottom near Bury in Lancashire, Lansingham, 15 years old and all ready to start. In fact, uh, when I've watched him practice earlier, he was wearing glasses. Now, he isn't wearing them now, so uh, I don't know quite how he's going to cope with this course. Maybe he's wearing contact lenses. And he threw the bike off the seesaw. That's a rolling seesaw, as I'm sure you noticed then, which... Uh, I suppose it's a little easier, isn't it, Nick, than uh, a stiff arm? Yes, it is a little easier, and uh, we thought it would be beneficial to do that for the younger riders. Don't forget, this is the senior heat, and in the top left-hand corner, the time that Lansingham has to be 92.6, set by Stephen Hole, and he's riding pretty well. Very well. He's on a 200cc Majesty, which is built by uh, John Shirt. Now, this does cause problems for him. It's quite a long wheelbase, so he's, uh, he's managed it very well. And here we come to the gun barrel. Now, is he going to manage this as well as Stephen Hole did? Yes, he is. And you can hear what the crowd think, but they know that's a difficult one, but he couldn't manage the bunny hop. Uh, if his wheels go out of the tram lines there, he's losing points, but uh, he stayed in, so he's OK. He tried to go a little too fast over the uh, bone shaker. That just was his 20 fault second there. penalties so far, and another 20 there. So he's not going to lead, but it's not a bad time. 75.8 plus 40 seconds makes 115.8. This is the White Rose representative, 14 year old Tony Wilson. 
from Hemsworth near Pontefract in West Yorkshire. And uh, quite a record he has in uh, junior trials so far, hasn't he, Mick? Has that? He has, yes. He's the junior superstars champion, the YMSC and TMX National Class B winner, and is currently leading the YMSA championship this time. No foot faults, of course, on this. Just two areas where foot faults count, just to remind you of those. The limbo and what we call the rollback, which is the last obstacle on the course. He threw that up a bit. Mm -hmm. He's also riding a 200cc Majesty, which are a very popular bike at the moment. With the junior riders. Well, so I find it quite remarkable the way that these youngsters can... Uh, with over these bikes are. And interesting he's taken that particular route out there. Doesn't get him to the gun barrel too well. Oh, that was nice, yes. Doesn't cause the problem you thought it would, mate. But there goes the bunny hop. Always a problem for these young riders. And in fact, and the bone and shaker. 20 seconds there, he came out of the tram lines. And so with the bone shaker costing him 20 there, can he do this clean? He can't, he didn't get his wheel high enough. There's the marshal slag. So it'll be 60 seconds to add to that. 133 seconds for Tony Wilson. Stephen West then going to attack that time up in the left-hand corner, set up by Stephen Hole of 92.6. I must say it's looking a pretty good time, that. Now, this lad is uh, from Swanage in Dorset. Very nice part of the country. He uh, looks a very big, strong lad. He's only 14 years old. He looks far older, I must say. Yes, he's a big lad. And this, the good thing about this one is riding a British trials bike. And if you look at the machine closely, you see, it doesn't have any visible rear suspension unit. That, that is under the seat, and they call that the monoshock or the canopy. But although at the moment it has a Japanese Yamaha engine, at the later day they're going to put an English engine in it, it will be a complete British trials bike. Bit of a novelty these days. Yes. He's going well. He's not going particularly quick, but he is free of penalties so far. And limbo a bit awkward for a big lad like that. He's really got to get down. No, he's not. Ah, no, he's gone. 20 seconds on the uh, gun barrel. That was through being a little too cautious. Well, feet outside, that doesn't matter, so he's clean on that, but he's got 20 seconds to add to this, so it's not going to be the greatest time in the world as he approaches the rollback. Now, this is a, a pretty difficult obstacle, and he's down 20 seconds. Very awkward, that one. Very, very 40 difficult. to add to that 90 makes 130 seconds. So after the biggest lad in the heat, the smallest one, young Bruce Hamer, 13 years old. He rode in this competition last year, and he comes from Wrexham in Cluey. Only 13, but he's been riding for five years, so he's no slouch. And he uh, acquitted himself pretty well last year, so he's hoping for good things this year. He is the current Cheshire B class champion, so uh, he's a very good rider. And also, he's riding the smallest capacity machine in this heat, which is only 75cc. I That's think, as, uh, as we found last year, it doesn't make it... All... Oh, he's missed the gate there. He actually missed the log. So he's got a 20-second penalty on that. The first one to fail on what we're calling the log fan. See, physically, it is a very uh, much smaller machine. So he's got uh, problems here. Time ticking away. But... Uh, I don't know if he's uh, going to get the bike going or not. Yes, he kick-starts it up, and I suppose it's about time we have one of those here. That's the name of the programme. But he's missed out the uh, skip as well. And it must shatter the confidence of uh, these younger lads, I think. Oh, I, I think it does, yes. 13 years old, and then that happens, yes. He'll be feeling very sad now. But it is a small And machine. he slips off there. Now, you can see the problem with the wet wheels when they come off on there. Of course, the course is getting wetter all the time. We should make that point as well. But the gun barrel causing more faults for young Bruce Hayden, so he's well out of it. Matthew Lefebvre then, the last one to go in this heat, trying to be one of the two qualifiers 
from this heat to go into the final. Stephen Hole already through 92.6 seconds. No one can uh, prevent him going into the final. Can Matthew Lefebvre become the second qualifier? The time he has to beat, 113 seconds to make sure that he qualifies. He's going very well. If he manages this next one, he could possibly put up a good time. He's 15 years no. old, but now then, that's exactly how this was devised, isn't it? Maybe yes. It was to yeah. cause that problem. Exactly that. Well, I said the conditions were bad. Well, that looks pretty awful. Unless these lads have been practicing on ploughed fields, then uh, they're not going to have a lot of chance. You can see it is more difficult for the later number. 15 the years old, this lad, Matthew. He comes from Chalfont St. Peter Bucks. And he's having terrible troubles with this course. So he'll get 20 second penalties on that as well. In fact, I'm saying as well, I think those are his only penalties so far, but the time's ticking away, he's not going to qualify. And that was a very nasty crunch. But that means that from this senior heat one, the qualifiers are Stephen Hole in 92.6 seconds and Lance Ingham uh, in 115.8. Hole and Ingham go through. So the seniors have done their best and now we come to the junior group. We've modified the course, they do it in the opposite direction. One or two of the more difficult logs have been removed, like the large one from down here. We just didn't reckon that the youngsters would manage that. But who wants to ride through that anyway? It's filthy! It's awful! Andrews, you've done it again. Are you looking forward to this, David? Yes. Are you? Dear, oh dear, it's terrible. Well, David's one of the competitors in this first heat. A little word about the bike, a bit small. Very small, yes, but this is the miniature version of the trick bike. And it's a full specialist machine? It is a specialist machine, yeah. All right, so that's what they're going to be riding on. Let's have a full list of the riders. James Bentley, he's 10, from Manchester. Jeff Wright from Essex, who's 11, he's the old man of the uh, squad here. Adam Norris, who's 10, from Bristol. Mark Sherman, also 10, from Surrey. Darren Snell, oh, he's an old one as well, he's 11, from Berkshire. And David Ashmore, who's 9, from Derbyshire. So with the course reverse, the first youngster on the starting line, an absolute veteran, James Bentley, 10 years old, who's been riding since he was four from Worsley in Manchester. Once again, promoter Nick Britton starts James off on the top. 20 second penalty straight away. Well, he's cleaned that. It's a lower bunny hop, uh, two and a half inches lower, so he cleaned that neatly. Real youngsters, these, and that's as good as anything we've seen. Club champion from Newton Lee Willows, but he's got a 20 second fault there in the limbo. And now around to approach the skip. They've got a helper up there, as you see, to get in. Yes, you notice with these small machines, they have a very short wheelbase. And uh, over some of the larger logs, they could be struggling. Maybe we'll notice that just down here on the first or second log. Well, you'll notice the big log missing from there. We didn't leave that in for the youngsters because we didn't reckon any of them would get over it. Uh, no foot faults for this area, of course. Just the limbo and the rollback, which in this direction is the first obstacle he came to. Now, this isn't a bad round. Look at the time there. He's got two faults. A smaller seesaw to complete it, and he did that well. 85.9 and two faults makes 125.9. Next to go, young Jeff Wright, 11 years old, from Rayleigh in Essex. And he's been riding for four years. Time to beat in the top left-hand corner, 125.9 seconds. And don't forget, as in the senior heat, we're looking for two qualifiers to go through to the final. Oh, oh, very unlucky there, very 20 unlucky, second yeah. fault. He again is on one of the smaller machines, an APCC, short wheelbase. He's out, he failed to come out through the gate. He's very unlucky with that. He could go back and try it again, but I think it's probably worth just taking the 20 second penalty and carrying on. Do you reckon this course is any easier in this direction? Mick, it looks pretty hard to me. Uh, it is a little easier, yes, and uh, we have uh, eased the sections a little bit for the smaller machines. Well, it's nice.
nicely clean in the limbo, but he's already got 80 seconds to add from uh, the first four obstacles that unfortunately made a mess of. And it looked as though he was starting so well. Just catching the, the mechanics there and uh, on the edge of the skip. This particular section in the uh, training they didn't like, but they seem to be coping with it okay. It doesn't look as difficult as it actually is. The camber on there is something like 45 degrees at the top, isn't it? It is, yes. But he's riding well. To, to ride a small bike over those logs, it takes special skills. Incidentally, this lad, yeah. Jeff Wright, he's... Uh, oh, he's you got see lucky the, this, again there. The short wheelbase there. And he gets no penalties out. for that, but he's certainly got a soaking. Incidentally, he started off as a trick rider and uh, he's raised over £6,000 for charities through uh, riding, which I think is marvellous. They're so brave, these youngsters. 11 years old, still going hard there. A lot to add. 115.5 plus at least 80, so he'll be out of it. Adam Norris, uh, another youngster, 10 years old, from Culpit Heath in Bristol. And again, the same time to beat that Jeff Wright tried to beat, 125.9. And it'll be interesting to see if any of these youngsters clean the more difficult of these hazards. And that rollback there is causing all the problems so far. Yes, the rollback is very difficult for them. Now he's got a problem there. He can keep the bike in, or he can just lift it out and take his 20-second penalty. Well, I think he stalled it anyway. Yes, he stalled it, but it will start in gear. So he will save him time. He's going to have to come out the side in the end there. Oh, very unfortunate. You seem a very popular bike, because this, is, again, is a White Hawk 80cc. <laughs> so all the smaller riders seem to prefer these. And he's cleaned the bunny up. Well done. Oh, and a very nasty fall there. Now, let's see if that shakes his confidence. He's got a 20-second penalty. Has he got the nerve to carry on? But he certainly looks as though he has. Bob Butcher, who's been in charge of the marshalling and of the, all the qualifying heats, was telling me that uh, he reckons that these lads are so durable they can stand just about anything. Well done through the limbo, so he's proved his confidence hasn't been totally shattered. Talk about these being small bikes, mate, but uh, when you see these little lads on, they look like large machines. Yes, uh, in camera, yes, they look uh, large machines, but when you see them stood at the side of the uh, adult machines, you see the difference. Yes, he tackled that well. It is very muddy down there, very slippery. You so easily lose it, and he has. That is a large log for the small machines. And as he goes around here, the wind suddenly gets up and the rain starts to come down, so the problems to increase for these little ones. I'm full of admiration for them. You can all ride better than I can. Nicely through, 138.9 plus quite a lot, at least 60. Now, next to go, young Mark Sherman, 10 years old, from Farnham in Surrey, and the condition's getting worse because the rain is starting to lash down here. Now, whether that affects the course, I don't think it could get much wetter than it is anyway, but if it's going to affect these riders, Mark's the first one to test it out, and he's thought he was going to clean that, but he stalled it. Yes, yeah, so it's a little unfortunate there. So, the time to beat still, 125.9, and he's out of the bone shaker. I'm a little bit worried about the barrels because with the water they will be really slippery. But we'll see how he attempts them now. Beautiful. Oh, oh. So Just unlucky, he nearly made it there. Desperately unlucky, 20 seconds there. So 80 seconds against him so far, plus his time which is ticking away. But still they carry on. I'd be surprised if any of these youngsters say they didn't enjoy it, in spite of the fact that it's difficult. Now, this is, according to you, the hardest way around, but he's made it look very easy, mate. Yes, you can go the uh, anti-clockwise direction with these small machines. With the larger machines, you'll have to go 
clockwise, I should imagine. Nasty rocks in the bottom there. Well clear and down into this strange sort of fan of logs. Very much more awkward than it looks. And he's riding with uh, great skill at the moment. Pity he picked up so many faults at the beginning because that's going to uh, put him out of the running, I would think. The biggest log in the competition there, and he's made that very well. So his elapsed time is not too bad, but uh, he's got 80 seconds to add, so he uh, fortunately will be out of it as well, I should think. But we need two qualifiers, and we've only got one quick one so far. 121.3 plus 80, 201.3 for Mark Sherman. Well, the light pretty bad here, but the rain apparently stopped just for a second as Darren Snell sits on the start line. Prepare to go here. Darren is 11 years old and comes from Burfield Common in Berkshire. He's on a slightly larger machine, 100 cc Yamaha. This rollback's caught them all out so far. Fastest time, and the rain comes down. Now he's going to battle on through an absolute storm, I think. 20 seconds there to fail on the bunny hop. Now, what's it going to do to these barrels? Brilliant. What a good performance. He certainly got it all under control at the moment. Well, this is a very good bit of riding indeed from Darren Snell. He's won three national uh, competitions this year. In Gwent, in Morden, and one in Kent. So he's a rider with a bit of four. And as I say, we're looking for two qualifiers. Could this be the second one? It looks almost certain that James Bentley, who hit that time 125.9, will go through. Will Darren Snell join him? He's looking very much that way. He's got 40 seconds of fault. He's riding in perhaps the worst conditions of the day so far. And one obstacle to come. Oh, and he's off. Well, he's got to pick this up. He'll still qualify. He's only got 40 seconds to go against him. He can still qualify if he can get the bike up and get over the line. It's a matter of inches. And he he's stole so the engine. unlucky. There's the finish line. No distance for him, but he just slipped off that seesaw with the muddy wheels, and now his bike won't start. Push it, lad. Push it and get through that finish. Push it! Someone's screaming at him there. Push it! I think that could be the father screaming Push at him. It! See what happened with yes, the bike he's falling on its away side. His chance here. This is a great shame because it was an excellent ride. The time ticking away. He spent 30 seconds trying to get the bike started, and that's an absolute disaster for him. See what's to happened push there. It up the hill. He flooded the car. Here he goes. He can't start it up. He's got 40 seconds to add, and he can't get through the line. It's muddy. It's slippery. They're willing him on there. And he's done it. 139.9 plus 40. 179.9. He's still in second place. And this is nine-year-old David Ashmore. David comes from Matlock in Derbyshire. He's got it all to do. If anyone deserves to go through in this championship, I suppose it's our last competitor, Darren Snell, for pushing his bike over the finish line. But young David here will be trying his best to make sure that he qualifies. He doesn't need a particularly fast time to qualify in this heat. There's the time on the left to beat, to win the heat, but he only needs to do 179.9 to actually qualify. And so far, 40 seconds of fault. One for the rollback, one for the bunny hop, and, and now he's off gun on the gun barrel. Yes, he's again on a smaller machine. But he's a little boy, isn't he? Very small yeah. indeed. And he couldn't quite hold it there. Unfortunate. Failing on the limbo there. Very unlucky. Apparently he's got his hobbies aren't just motorcycle. He likes swimming and judo as well. But, uh, he might have to wrestle this bike around a bit before he gets to the end of the course. He's really enjoying himself with this one though. The time we're looking for for young David is 179.9. Now at the moment he's got 80 seconds to add. So 179.9 and this young lad, nine years old, will qualify for the final. 
He's got about 20 seconds in hand to finish this course. This cost me to make it. He could well do it. No. Nope. Oh, he's off on the corner there. The bike's so wet. Now, oh, can he get it going? 80 seconds to add to this. When that gets to 99.9, he's out. And poor David is out. So unlucky. So unlucky. He'll be third the way he's going. 108.2 plus 80 makes 188.2. He's in third place, but it's not good enough. So our two qualifiers from this first junior heat, James Bentley, age 10, with 125.9, and Darren Snell, who pushed his bike over the finishing line, aged 11, with 179.9. So there it is, heat one now complete. Two more heats to go. Join us for the next junior kickstart, when we'll have 12 more riders and heat two. Goodbye. Hello again, welcome back to Eastern Neston, where we're ready for heat two of the Lombard Tricity Junior Kickstart. And the rain has come down right on cue just to make the course even more difficult than it was for the poor competitors in heat one. And just to give you a reminder of the format, we have two groups. We have the seniors who are aged up to 15, we have the juniors who are aged up to 12. And you'll be able to see the second heat for each of those groups this afternoon. In the previous uh, program, you'll have seen that we got two qualifiers from each group. We get two more today, two more from Heat 3, and all those six will then go on into the final. But Heat 2 is what we're on about. Let's look at the full list of the riders for the senior event. Timothy Martin from Cornwall, who's 14. David Lloyd from Cheshire, he's 13. Martin Arden, last year's winner from Lincolnshire, he's back here again. He's 15 this year, is he going to do it again? Scott Cameron from Bristol, he's 14. David Johnson from Derbyshire, he's 14. And Duncan Baxter, who's just 12, from Notts. And the first lad on the starting line for the second heat, Timothy Martin, 14 years old, and he's come a very long way to take part in this heat. He comes from Redruth in Cornwall. And comes down with a crash off the seesaw, but he's safely on his way. He's riding a a Yamaha machine built by a company called Whitehawk. This is also popular with the junior riders. Well, you can see the conditions. Actually, the sun is coming out. Surprise, surprise. But uh, the underwheel conditions are appalling. He's been riding uh, bikes for nine years, which I find amazing. He started when he was five. And he's had quite a successful career, really. I mean, it's possible to have a career by the time you're 14. Yes, apparently he was fourth in the British Trials Championship. So, he looks as though he has and a bright this future. this did cause problems last week, and it's causing problems again now. So, 20 seconds. And but he manages the bunny hop, which is good. Feet out there don't matter at all. There are only two sections where it matters about the feet. This is one of them, the rollback. The other, of course, was the limbo. He's got his wheel up there. He's rolled back well. Keep your feet up, lad. He's done it. That's a good ride. Flag came up, perhaps, there. So we've got 20 seconds there to add as well. So 40 to add to that makes 123.7. Time to beat in the top left-hand corner. 123.7 seconds. And David Lloyd, just 13 years old, from Sandbach in Cheshire is going to try to beat that time. He is an experienced rider, this one. In fact, he's a works rider for the Fantic team. And Which he's is riding, amazing, isn't it? Yes, at, age, at that age, yes. And it's a 156cc machine. Yes, what exactly happens when, when you're a works rider? I mean, what does that uh, well, imply? In this case, uh, the, mach the oh, machine is... In this is case, a, a work <laughs> sticker. He's having a bit of trouble here. 
There we are. Come on, David, heave it out then. Uh, in, in last week's heat, to, in the previous heat, one bike got stuck exactly like this. Now, you arranged the course of this with that, I think, didn't you? We did, yes, and uh, there's two possibilities. You can uh, ride over on one wheel over both the logs, and they don't seem to have realised that at the moment. I saw one of them do it in, in training, and uh, I thought maybe the others would have followed. I've got a sneaky feeling he's going to be out of the exit gate as well. He's going to come inside that uh, post, you can see. He's inside now, he is doing that, but look at the time, just ticking away. Now, he won't get a 20-second penalty, but uh, it's uh, almost an irrelevance. Look how deep that mud is. So he's in a, a terrible state. He's not going to get anywhere in this competition. Never mind, it's all good experience. Well, this is the reigning junior kickstart champion, Martin Arden, who comes from Grantham in Lincolnshire. And how long is he going to stay champion? Can he retain it this year? Well, just as a little guide, the winner of Heat 1, the fastest time, was 92.6. So there's the thing you can gauge it by and just see how Martin manages with this course. He's on a 240 Fanti. Strange, really, because they call this machine a 240 Fantig when it really is a 212cc machine. Well, Martin Arden doing extremely well here. Uh, no faults so far. But there he goes, 20 to add. So now he'll have to motor, but he is going fast. So I don't think he's got too many problems at the moment. Don't forget, we're looking for two qualifiers from this particular heat. And uh, I should think at the speed he's going at the moment, Martin could well be there, but that is a bad fault. He should have made the bunny hop, and he only just made the bone shaker. So with the rollback to come, this has caused a lot of problems. He now has to roll back, foot down, 26, so he's got 60 to add. He could have he could have rid himself out of this. 60 to add to that makes 135.5, and it could well not be good enough. Well, this is Scott Cameron. He comes from Culpit Heath near Bristol. And he is 14 years old. And the time he's got to beat up there in the left-hand corner. And judging from the previous heat, heat one, anyone still to come has a very good chance of qualifying. That 123.7 is not a particularly fast time. Oh! What a fantastic try, though. Well, he tried to fly it, didn't he? Uh, doesn't seem to have lost any confidence through that, mate. No, he doesn't. It's possibly just what he needed to uh, get him to go faster. I should think it's certainly got the adrenaline flowing. He hasn't lost any points yet, but there he has, 20. Limbo causing more problems in this heat than it did in heat one. This was the problem obstacle, but he's well through it. That was a nice ride. Money hops, 20 seconds there. He's got to keep inside the tram lines on the bone shaker, and he manages it. So the roll back to come. He's a bit slower than Martin Arden. But, oh, he's blew it, foot down. You saw the flag going there. So 60 seconds to add to is 80.2. That makes 140.2. David Johnson here, 14 years old, and he comes from Worksworth in Derbyshire. And David Johnson attempting to beat this time 123.7. And as I said, as the last rider went off, this is not a particularly fast time. The first heat was won in a time of 92.6, so anything can happen yet. Looks like he's made the same mistake here as young David Lloyd did earlier. Yes, but he looks a strong lad. And you can see what the conditions are like there. It's an absolute quagmire there. The mud's getting deeper and nastier as the event progresses. At least the sun is out now, although there's a strong wind. Well, he's, uh, he's still not lost points there, but he has stalled his bike, so time ticks away. Apparently, he likes to work on his own machine, him and his father. 
if they prepare the machine themselves. I wonder if they prepared it for the conditions that they're riding on now. Mud, slush, slippery, watery. Of course, an absolute mess. As I say that, of course, they're in perhaps the best bit. 20 seconds to go there. He's going to have ridden himself out of it. He's not going to get uh, even in second place on the current timings. A long way to go and a lot of faults against him. He missed his gate there. So David Johnson definitely out of it as well. Well, this is the youngest lad in the heat, just 12 years old, Duncan Baxter, who comes from Radcliffe-on-Trent in Nottingham. And the time he has to beat, you can forget that 123.7, think of 135.5, because that was the time set by Martin Arden, who is in second place. Two qualifiers, so if Duncan can do better than 135.5, then he will go through into the final at the expense of the 1981 Junior Kickstart winner. So that's the state of play. Let's see how he copes with this very difficult course. I'm very surprised he didn't try to jump there, like he'd seen some of the other competitors do. He's really got to lift it out, so he's going to be a tired lad after this as well. You can see the conditions. I keep on saying this. It's an absolute quagmire there. It's got deeper and nastier as the heat had progressed. And uh, I don't think he's going to get out of there, and he's certainly not going to beat... Uh, the required time. Uh, 12 years old and uh, struggling there, coming out the wrong side of the gate as well. So his chances have gone, there's no question about that. Let's just see how he copes with the rest of the course because that must have taken some of his energy. A lot of his energy, yes. Although he's on uh, a Majesty machine, it is only a small capacity engine, a 125. He's missing another gate there. And that's possible the reason he didn't try to jump the logs because he didn't have the power to do it. They're showing a lot of intelligence, though, these lads. When they know that they've actually blown a particular obstacle, they are getting out of it quickly, taking their maximum penalty and just getting out. The skip has caused no problems at all for any of them. So with the faults already accumulated by Duncan Baxter. It does mean that the 1981 winner of this championship, the current holder, stays in the tournament. Martin Arden will go through, as will Timothy Martin. But young Duncan Baxter that we're looking at now, he unfortunately is wide out. But he's ridden that pretty well, hasn't he, Mick? Yes, his control is beautiful. It's a, it's a shame, really, just about the log. Well, I think it's a good recovery in the circumstances. Yes, he's got a bright future in front of him. About 20 seconds there, an awful lot again to add to him. This has been a very high-scoring heat, less successful than the previous one, 149.5 plus a lot. So our two qualifiers, as I said there, Timothy Martin with 123.7 and Martin Arden with 135.5. They'll go through to the final. Well, the seniors have had their problems on this course. What are the juniors going to make of it? Particularly if the rain that is so obviously threatening now is going to lash down here, because if it does, I can see that the top of these barrels, which the youngsters are going to have to tackle, of course, in the opposite direction to the way the seniors went, well, they're just going to slip off here, and it's going to be rather difficult. Let's see what happens and have a full list of the riders. Sean Hoyle from South Yorkshire, who's 11. Robert Warner, who's 12 from Oxford. Mark Jackson, he's also 12 from Lancashire. Wayne Braybrook, he's 12 as well. He comes from West Yorks. Neil O'Sheen from Kent, who's just 10. And Mike Lanigan, another 12-year-old from Cleveland. Once again, the course reversed, and Sean Hoyle, 11 years old. He comes from Wombwell near Barnsley in South Yorkshire. Wormswell, is it? Sean Hoyle, 11 years old. And how's he going to manage on this? He's the first of the juniors to clean this. No one cleaned it in the previous heat. So that's a wonderful start for him. And we'll give him great confidence. And the bone shaker as well. And uh, threw it away, rather, attacking the bunny hop a bit too hard. Beautiful. Just making that, looking for a flag. No, nothing came up, so he's fine with that. He really is racing this hard. Fastest time in the previous heat was 125.9. So uh, that's a guide, but no, he's got 20, 20 yeah. seconds now on the limbo. Couldn't quite hold the bike. This is a slightly larger machine than the other ones. It has larger wheels. And uh, the capacity is 100cc. 
this looks like a very good ride indeed so far. I'd say the worst of it was over, but uh, <laughs> these courses have a habit of proving me wrong, <laughs> and there it is. Yes, every time I open my mouth, Mick Andrews puts his foot in it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, get off and lift it. That's it. Now back on again. He Use was the going feet with and supreme confidence the there with Sean, but uh, he's in the right mess here. I seem to remember uh, remember the Japanese rider in uh, the adult kickstart, Kyotaro Hattori jamming his bike like this in the skip. It took him about two minutes to get it out, didn't it? A long time, yes. It's about the same here. Now, yes, he's done it. He'll be annoyed about that because it was a good round until then. Makes light of the big log. Well, he's setting the standard in this. It's not a bad time as far as elapsed time is concerned, but he's got 40 seconds to add. 123.6 plus 40 makes 163.6. Robert Warner then, 12 years old, one of the oldest uh, competitors in the junior heats. He comes from Henley-on-Thames, just outside Henley-on-Thames in Oxfordshire. Lovely part of the country. I wonder if he wrecks that part of the country on his motorbike. He may. 20 seconds fault so far, failing to get the roll back. Just hanging on to it on the bone shaker, and the bunny hop catches yet another one. He's on a Fantix 7G 5cc machine. Is this bunny hop particularly difficult, Mick, for uh, these young riders? It I mean, is, yes. You need yes. a fair bit of strength. You need a fair bit of strength, yes, and uh, the power also with the machine. They are very small machines. But, uh, the skip not causing many problems. This is where Sean Hoyle came unstuck, but no problems for Robert Warner. And that is very slippery now. The seesaw cannot be a lot of fun. But it's a good time. It's very fast. 78.5 plus 80 makes 158.5. He's in the lead. That's the time to beat for young Mark Jackson. Sitting here on the starting line, 12 years old, and he comes from Rayton near Oldham in Lancashire. Mark Jackson, 12 years old. He's only a little lad, but uh, one of the older competitors in this junior heat. But instantly got a 20-second fault. Well, we've had a lot of rain during this week. It has stopped now, but the ground is wetter and wetter. If that's possible, he's cleaned the bunny hop. Oh, it's this great to clean the bunny hop with the small machine. So difficult. There's no help at all once they're on the top of those barrels, and I think that the wet and the mud that's been carried on by the wheels makes it almost impossible. It's a very difficult manoeuvre, yes. Anti-clockwise. He's very fast through the limbo and clean. Well, that should clean the wheels a bit, Nick. Yes, it will, and it'll help him down this next run. This is not a bad time, and he's got 40 seconds of fault only. So he could well go in the lead with this ride, provided he doesn't make a mess of this section. I mustn't say that. The number of times uh, these lads have had difficulty. It looked like a flag, but I can't think of any reason that it would be there for, so I'm going to discount it for the moment, but he's stuck in the bottom of the water. Oh, and he's over again. Oh, no. Oh, this is a disaster for him. You can hear him. Listen to the effort he's putting into that. Well, this is really unfortunate for him. That's muddy, it's nasty, it's gold. And he must be tired now. And he's away on the mud. Well, 
I'm going to count it at the moment. 40 seconds to add to his time of 121.4 makes 161.4, which would put him in second place. And in fact, there was an extra 20 seconds for the trouble with that log. I'm not quite sure what caused it, but that makes it 181.4 for Mark Jackson. So he'll be out of it. Wayne Braybrook is next on the starting line. 12 years old, comes from Keithley in West Yorkshire. And the time to beat for him still that 158.5. Quite a slow time. You'd think it should be easily beaten, but all these youngsters having difficulty, particularly with that hazard. Well, it makes a change to have a different make of machine in the competition. Here we have an Italian Eitelejet, 100cc. And watching this lad in practice, he was very good. Just dropped the back wheel onto the top of the bunny hop, but it stayed up, so he's clean there. Just couldn't hold it on the gun barrel. It's debatable, isn't it, Mick, whether they should uh, attack that a little faster. They get through possibly better that way. It would help, I think, yes. Because they're certainly bad conditions. But he should have the stamina, this boy, because recently he was the winner of the uh, two-day Scarborough trial. He's only been riding for three years, so he's a relative newcomer to uh, this kind of sport. And you've got lads of ten who've been riding for seven years. It's uh, a little frightening. Forty seconds against him, but uh, he's much slower than Robert Warner, who's currently in the lead in this heat. Robert had 80 seconds of faults, but he completed the course very quickly, 78.5. See the time ticking away on the right for Wayne. No trouble there for him, or is there? Nearly slipping off the seesaw, nearly losing it on the way out, but 100.9 plus 40 makes 140.9, and he's in the lead. One of the younger competitors, 10-year-old Neil O'Sheen from Rutum in Kent. Time to beat now, 140.9. Don't forget, we're looking for two qualifiers from this, the second junior heat. 20-second fault there, but uh, almost everyone's had that. That was a very nice ride, though. Over the bone shake, huh? Making points. a mess of the bunny hop. Possibly not got the strength to kick the backside head over. Dropping off the gun barrel, taking his 20-second full penalty. In fact, the machine looks physically too large for him, doesn't it? That's what I was saying to you, I think, uh, in the previous heat. Uh, Mick, that with these youngsters who really are so small, they look like full-size bikes that they're riding anyway. Yes. But, uh, looking at him riding this machine, you'd think he'd be better on one of the smaller ones. Spears down into the wooded area to hop over the log fan. It's a good time. He's going pretty well. 60 seconds to add to this. He could well come in for a place. This is a good ride. He's been riding for three years. That means he started when he was seven. Now, is he going to miss this? No, he just gets away with it. It's not bad at all. 90.4, that's not bad, plus 60 makes 150.4, he's in second place. A oh, relative newcomer to this game, 18 months he's been riding, Mike Lanigan, age 12, who comes from uh, Easington in Cleveland, down in the northeast. And all struggling to make this one. In fact, it almost looks like they've given up on it. Maybe. I think so, yes, but we did have one rider Early on, which uh, cleaned it. That first rider on this heat cleaned it. And, yeah. Uh, there's the bunny hop gone. That's caused the problems for these youngsters. Ooh! That's a nasty fall there. You can see the protection afforded to the motor <laughs> underneath there as it fell. She needs it when they're throwing them around on these sort of things and the skips. But he's a strong boy. Well, he'll have to go a bit now. He really will have to attack the course.
this limbo placed in a dip, sort of gully, which ought to make it very difficult, but uh, mostly the riders have managed it. Well through the skip, that's as well ridden as we've seen it done. 60 seconds to add to this elapsed time. Well, he's going to be pushing it to get in. The last one to go in this, the second junior heat. We're looking for two qualifiers. And the time he's got to beat is 140.9. Uh, or rather, 150.4 will get him a place in the final. 60 to add to that, he can't do it. He can't do it, he's out of it. It's quite a good ride from Mike Lanigan there. 108.1 plus 60 makes 168.1. So the two qualifiers, Neil O'Sheen and Wayne Braybrook. Well, there you go, next week, another heat, the third and final of the heat. So why don't you join us again on Junior Kickstart. Bye-bye. And that third and final heat is at the same time next Tuesday. Peter Ashmore, who rode in this event last year from Derbyshire, he's also 14. So too is John Fletcher from Yorkshire. Then Dean Devereux from Northampton, he's only 13, as is Craig Brook from Cluid. Heat three then gets underway with Gavin Cooper, just 14 years old, from Meerworth in Kent. Two qualifiers again we're looking for from this heat to go through to the final to join the four lads who are already through. Next Tuesday. Peter Ashmore, who rode in this event last year from Derbyshire, he's also 14. So too is John Fletcher from Yorkshire. Then Dean Devereux from Northampton, he's only 13, as is Craig Brook from Cluid. Heat three then gets underway with Gavin Cooper, just 14 years old, from Meerworth in Kent. Two qualifiers again we're looking for from this heat to go through to the final to join the four lads who are already through. He started riding when he was just seven years old, so uh, plenty of experience. He's now 14. He's uh, seen in the previous heats that those logs have caused a lot of problems, but they didn't seem to bother him one bit. Now, this boy is a works rider for Fantic UK, so uh, when you do have a works bike, you are a good rider. He's certainly moving very quickly, but stalled as he came out there. Limbo causing no problem. That's one of the two points on the course where foot faults apply. So he's clear so far. This is a good ride, mate. Yes, he's a very talented boy, this one. The list of championships that he's won is incredible. And he's just cleared the bunny hop. Tipped it, but uh, just was clear. And he's out of the side of that. So he'll have 20 seconds there. That was a little unfortunate for him. So the best time so far for this course, 92.6, set up in the very first heat by Stephen Hole, and another 20 seconds there by Gavin Cooper, so he's got 40 to add to his time. 91.3 plus 40, 131.3. Another Lancashire lad from Rochdale, Jeremy Cragg, 14 years old. Time to beat in the top left-hand corner, 131.3. Well, the seesaws cause no problems in any of the heats. Neither does this water, but uh, it looks as though it's getting pretty deep to me. It certainly is, yes. Now, how's he going to attempt these logs? Too tentatively, perhaps. You see how deep it is there? He's over. There's a flag sort of waving around there, but I can't tell whether it's been raised or not. No, I don't think he's been given a penalty, but... Uh, I think she was just trying to shield herself from the splash. So he's clear but mucky.
He also rides in uh, bicycle trials. This has become quite big now, isn't it? Uh, the non-motorised version. It is, yes. Now, this limbo, well, it causes the seniors, the very seniors, in uh, kickstart problems. So these lads, for the most part, done pretty well, but uh, 20 seconds he's got to add there. Now, his wheels are very wet. Is he going to stay on the gum barrel? No, he's not. Well, a good bunny hop, so he'll be pleased with that. Quite a high time, quite... Uh, it's taken quite a long time to get round here. Plus his penalties. Here he comes to the rollback. Is he going to be one of the few people to achieve this properly? No, he's not. 20 seconds there. Unfortunate. So, by my reckoning, 60 to add to his 108.6 meter, 168.6. This is Peter Ashmore. He took part in Junior Kickstart last year. He didn't win, but he acquitted himself pretty well. He's qualified again for it this year and uh, full of confidence. Comes from Matlock in Derbyshire. Close to you, Mick. Yes, just uh, four miles away from where I live, yes. I want to see him jump this. Is he going to try it? No. He might have a few problems though, isn't, it? isn't his bike stand hanging down? Oh, it's come up. I thought it was uh, locked down at the back, but it's uh, dropped back into the place. Yes, he's riding the 200cc machine, also a Yamaha Majesty. And he's going well. It's a very good time to this point. I see him changing down into first gear, but he's going anti clockwise. Any advantage you see in that? No, he's blown it anyway. <laughs> Here we go then. Now he's straight off the gun barrel. So he started well, but now his round seems to be falling apart rather. But a good bunny hop. And it's fast, so he could still be up amongst the leaders. Keeping the bike in the tram lines, he's okay. So only 40 faults so far. That was beautifully oh, beautiful. done. That was perfection. He's away. 83.3 plus 40 makes 123.3 and puts him in the lead. Smiling lad on the starting line, John Fletcher from Halton in Leeds. <laughs> and off he goes. The time to beat, 123.3. Two qualifiers we're looking for from this heat. And that time ought to be beatable because the uh, fastest time we've had in any of the heats, 92.6 in the very first ride of the first heat. And he flew that pretty well. That was beautiful, yes. Very good. This is also another Italian Fantic, 156cc. Very popular machine. A little bit slower than Peter Ashmore at this point, but uh, still a chance to go clear, which, of course, young Ashmore failed to do. Okay. You see, the easier way round the limbo is, is clockwise. He's made an absolute mess of that, so 20 to add. Maximum of 20 faults on any one obstacle. He's riding this very intelligently, though, refusing to panic when things go wrong. Very, very nice, yes. If you can just manage this bunny hop. It stayed there. Yes, it it stayed. stayed there. Is he going to keep it in or not? Uh, it might be worth taking the penalty. Well, he's, he's got to anyway. 20 seconds there on the, on the bone shaker. So 40 to add to this. He's not going to go in the lead. In fact, I think he can't even make second place now. He's out of it. Great shame, it's a good ride though. John Fletcher add 60 to that, makes 164.5. Now, this is Dean Deverer from Higham Ferrers in Northamptonshire. He's only 13, so he's one of the youngest in this uh, senior part of Junior Kickstart. Uh, the time he's got to beat, you can see it on the left hand top corner of your screen. And anyone who can actually clean this course.
should go through to the final. They don't have to go particularly quickly, just have to keep it clean. But <laughs> with that amount of mud, that's easier said than done. That was a good try. Yes, he was completely out of control coming out of that last particular obstacle. He's got uh, 20 second penalties for failing on the skip there, but uh, yes, it, it looks as though the bike was uh, riding him rather than him riding the yes. bike. I don't know. 20 seconds there in the limbo, so Dean Devereaux is not going to qualify, I don't think. But he's a strong old boy. He's a rugby player at school, so... Basketball, oh, he just came off the side there. Flags up, 20 seconds on the gun barrel. 20 seconds on the bunny hop, he's way out of it, riding his way out of it faster with each uh, obstacle. Very unfortunate for him, he's attacked the course, but uh, unfortunately the course fought back. It really did, yes. And 20 seconds there, so 100 seconds to add to this, way out of it, hard luck Dean. Well, he's got to be the uh, smallest competitor in this uh, third heat, Craig Brook. 13 years old, and he's only been riding for two years, so it's great that he's even qualified for these final stages of junior kickstart. Well, we've seen this course get progressively more difficult, so can young Craig beat that time in the top corner? Well, actually, he doesn't need to. If he can beat 131.3, he would be at least second in this heat and consequently would qualify. But the course has got more difficult. It's hard work for these little lads. It is. This is the one. And he's done it. That was fantastic. Well, you can see even the officials applauding him there, and that was a delightful bit of riding. But he's missed uh, he's missed one of the logs there. Fan, so 20 seconds. But his time's not too bad at this point. Now that is another place to stall your bike. It's not a nice place. There's a lot of rocks in the bottom of the bell. We'll get some applause for getting out of there. So I seem to remember Kiyotaro Hattori from Japan having a bit of trouble in the skip uh, in the senior event earlier this year. Yes, a lot of trouble. But what is remarkable with this young boy is only just progressed onto this machine before he was riding an 80cc machine, very small. Uh, 20 seconds on the gun barrel, slipped off there, unlucky. It strikes me that the bunny hop is very difficult for these little lads because it requires a certain amount of strength, Mick. It is, I don't think they do have the uh, actual strength to lift the bike over because basically if you get over the bunny hop, it, it is brute force. Well, young Craig is definitely out of the running. There's no question about it. He's got uh, 80 seconds to add to his time. Whatever happens now, and another 20 there. An unfortunate round for him, and having his bike stall at the start kind of helped him. So he won't qualify. You can add 100 seconds to that, makes 200.4. So into the final from today's heat, we have Peter Ashmore, 123.3, and Gavin Cooper, 131.3. And we'll get our last two finalists then from this Junior Heat 3. This is the full squad, Ivan Philipson from West Yorkshire, who's 12, John Shirt, who's 11, from Derbyshire, he rode here last year, incidentally, Wesley Bean, who's 11, he comes from Bedfordshire, Chris Hannant, he's also 11, from Tyne and Weir, Stephen Colley, coming over from the Isle of Man, age 10, and Jason Levitt, who's 11, from Kent. So, to start off, the junior heat three, Ivan Philipson from Cullingworth near Bradford in West Yorkshire. All set to go. Two qualifiers again we're looking for from this heat. And Ivan will be out to set up, uh, first of all, set the mark for the others, but to set up a good time. Once again, failing on the rollback. And here we have another different machine, an SWM this time. 80cc. We should point out, should we, make that these bikes, all of them, these uh, are very special. Very special. And they are yes. the only kind of bikes that ought to be used for practicing this sort of trial stuff. Yes, practice. you should never attempt this on uh, anything like mopeds or street bikes. No, you have to do it with special machinery. He's holding this pretty well, but down they go, and down he goes ground, very slippery, and that won't help the people who come after him. He 
was going very well until then. He could uh, clean the gun barrels. And he's over there. Can he get the bike quickly? Tell him to get the bike. Is it, is it okay? Yes, I was worried there because uh, his leg was trapped underneath. And I thought they should have had the bike off there a little earlier. However, he looks okay. He's uh, got some tape marks on his uh, leathers there, which have uh, come unstuck, but I don't think he's done himself any damage. And also, you can see there that uh, the leather boot saved his leg. So whenever you go training or riding a bike, make sure you have uh, good boots. Yes, it's, not, uh, it's not a sport to be done in plimsolls, is it? No, strong boots. And preferably gloves, which most of these young boys don't seem to use. Do you use gloves? Yes, all the time. Well, in spite of that bad fall, I think he still only has uh, two faults, 40 seconds to add, so it's not a bad time. 121.2 plus 40 makes 161.2. In fact, uh, there's an extra 20 seconds penalty for Ivan Philipson there when he fell out of the skip. This is John Shirt. He's 11 years old, and would you believe he's been riding for seven years? And then the mind boggles. He comes from Buxton in Derbyshire. And his father's pretty well known in uh, this field as well. Yes, he's the uh, builder of the Yamaha Majesty. Of which this uh, is an example. Yes, this is the 100cc version of it. On the gun barrels. It's a shame that when they do the bunny hop, which actually is really very difficult, you expect them to get through on the on the gun barrel. And, uh, and John there blowing that. Only 40 seconds fault so far, though, and a reasonable time at this stage on the course. Oh, he's, he's riding very well. Two qualifiers we're looking for, the time to beat that first rider, 181.2. I doubt if that time will survive the test of this heat. Three, two faults, 40 seconds to add to what looks like a very good time. And this little hill leading to the seesaw is getting very slippery indeed. Excellent ride there, 81.6 plus 40 makes 121.6. Another veteran here, Wesley Bean, 11 years old, been riding for seven years, and he's got to try and beat the time just set up by John Shirt, 121.6, the fastest time of any of the junior qualifiers to date. No, he didn't quite clean it. He was so unlucky there. The exit gate is a, a yard or two away from there, and he just put his foot down. Very unlucky. No, it's Fails hard luck on, on the bunny hop. Yeah. Uh, maximum 20 seconds there. But those barrels, it's a, it's a very hit-and-miss uh, obstacle, I think. Yes, you have to be exactly on the uh, top of those barrels because they are very slippery. It's a real trouble getting this started again. That's so frustrating for them. He's got to start it himself. Uh, 60 seconds of fault. You really feel for them because... Is he doing anything wrong there, Mick? No, I think what normally happens when a machine falls over, it floods the carburetor and the engines become flooded with fuel. And, and with these two-stroke engines, sometimes you have difficulty in starting them. Oh, this is really bad luck for him. So far, 60 volts, so he'll be out of it. Chris Hannant here from Newcastle, Tynham Weir, 11 years old, and been riding for two and a half years. Actually goes to Wickham Comprehensive School. And I thought they were going to be cheering there for him as he cleaned that, but he didn't. 22nd fault. No problem there with the bone shaker. You can see why it gets its name. And he's cleaned the bunny hop. Very neat. 
Yes, he's looking good. Uh, I was just going to say he was looking good. Until that he really was, Dad. Uh, uh, you can see the luck of the game there, whereas Wesley Bean's bike stalled and wouldn't start again. Young Chris here, his bike kept running and he was able to go, but he's blown the limbo, 20 seconds there, and he wants to get out of that as soon as he can. And this is exactly the same type of machine as the last one. This is a Fantic 75cc. So I'm full of admiration for the way these youngsters take the knocks. Hard to believe they're just 11 and 12 years old. We've said before they ride like adults, and I think they've got a better temperament sometimes than the adult riders. See how sticky and nasty that is there. This is a good elapsed time, but he's got 60 seconds to add. It's not bad. 95.3 plus 60 makes 155.3. Stephen Colley next to go. He's just 10 years old and he's come over from the Isle of Man to take part in this event. And how's he going to do? Well, it's a very different type of uh, motorcycling to what the people from the Isle of Man are used to. But he has the number one plate for the Isle of Man Bicycle Motocross Championship. So he must be a very good bicycle rider. Oh, and he's lucky with the bunny hop there. It stays up. Is he going to hold it? Yes, he is. Good balance. He really did have to hold on to that as well. It looked as though he was going to lose it for a second. You see, that machine went along there perfectly, and this is identical to the previous two machines. And he's well out of that. Just ten years old. That's all. I'd say he's got a bit of a future, this lad, the way he's riding, Mick. He's looking to be very capable. Yes. Well, you can see in the top left-hand corner the time to beat, 121.6. He could be well on target for that. And almost the youngest competitor in the heats. Is he going to hold it? Oh, there's always something that gets him. And I think that... Uh, that's only the second time anyone's had trouble with that particular obstacle. Never mind, he's only got 20 seconds penalty against him. So far, not too much of an elapsed time. He could well run into second place here. Yes, he's held it. 106.3 plus 20, 126.3 is in second place. A very good ride indeed. Well, it's all up to young Jason Levitt, who's 11 years old from Tunbridge Wells in Kent, because he now has to, well, he can try and beat 121.6 if he likes, but the time he has to beat to qualify is 126.3, the time set up by young Stephen Colley. And instantly he's got his 20-second fault, so he's going to have to go very well to get into the final. And he's out there, he's failed to get out of the gate. He's out there, so a 20-second penalty there. I would say that already that is going to put him out of it. Yes, it appears to be. That out of balance when he hit the bunny hop. Very nasty fall there as he goes off the gun barrel. Trapping his leg a bit. So... Awkward, uncomfortable, embarrassing for him, but he's not going to get through. Well, that's the end of the third heat, and our qualifiers quite clearly there. John Shirt, 11 years old in 121.6, and Stephen Colley, 10 years old with 126.3. Those two head and shoulders above the best. So that completes the heats. Three heats for both the juniors and the seniors. Six qualifiers from each go through to the finals. The finals in our next kickstart program. Hope you'll join us for that, McAndrews and I. Certainly looking forward to it. See you then. Goodbye. And the grand finals can be seen on Thursday evening at 6.25.
Sellers and Sophia Loren star in the comedy The Millionaires. That's after the grand final of Junior Kickstart. Again, and as they say, the sun shines on the righteous. Well, I'm not too sure about that, but it certainly shines on the successful for the 12 qualifiers for the two finals that we have for you today in Junior Kickstart, the Lombard Tristy Junior Kickstart. Marvellous conditions, Mick. Fantastic, yes. Now then, uh, we're standing by one of the obstacles that you've devised for this new course. We call it the Dragon's Teeth. Now, go on, explain why they're a bit sharp, these teeth. <clears throat> Five up and down, eight inches wide, very difficult to balance. Maybe we'll only get one or two who survive this one. Well, the problem is, of course, that uh, not only is it just the basic balance, but at the end, in each direction, there's one that's cambered off so they yes. could fall. All right. Well, the senior heat, or rather the senior final, is run over two legs. They go in each direction over this new course. The junior final, that takes place in just one direction. We're going to start with the seniors. Let's look at the running order. And they go in the order that they qualified, the slowest first. So number nine is Martin Arden, last year's winner and the slowest of the qualifiers. Number 13 then, Gavin Cooper. Number seven, Timothy Martin. Number 15, Peter Ashmore. Number two, Lance Ingham. And the fastest qualified by a long way, Stephen Holm. So last year's winner, Martin Arden, the first one to go and to set the standard in the first leg of this two-leg final. A very difficult taxing course, a lot of balance obstacles. And he starts with a balance pole which he cleans. That's a very difficult obstacle, the balance pole. It's nine feet long. And he's got a penalty there for his back wheel coming away from the over the white lines. And he's also fell on the hurdle. So he's got 40 seconds against him so far. But don't forget it's over two legs, so nothing is decided for quite some time. 1981 Junior Kickstart winner. And 20 seconds there on the running limbo. He didn't even uh, duck low for that one. He's also caught the bunny hop, so he's got 80 seconds to add so far, although he's very fast, isn't he? Mate? Very fast, yes. And he's a tall lad for 15 years old. And I think that's possibly why he's having trouble with the limbo. Diving out of the Dragon's Teeth, where we thought that would cause the problems. He's got 100 seconds to add to that, makes 156.9 for his first ride. Serious face lad then, 14-year-old Gavin Cooper from Meerworth in Kent. Very experienced little rider, been riding for seven years, and he's only 14. So his time to beat in the top left-hand corner, but don't forget it's over two legs, this. So the second leg times are what we'll really be looking for. And being the final, these riders are really nervous. And he's, oh, the marshal there, marking him down, that rear wheel just coming over the white there on the double log. Now that's proving to be very difficult, and he's lost it in the trees. That's a really awkward manoeuvre. He just swung it away. A little bit too much throttle, was it? Too much throttle, yes, he found a lot of wheel grip there. Trying to ride over a marshal, or through one. Well, he's got out of it. Um, I don't know if he's been penalised there, I don't think so. Very hard to tell. Uh, you can't see the flag when the marshal's been run over by the bike. No, he, he won't have been penalised in that particular one. A little bit hard onto the... Oh, and he's off the side of the car. The marshal's picked him up. He's OK. But he missed the exit gate. He won't be pleased about that, but that was a nasty slide. But they bounce back again. Uh, getting the applause for the bravery of just getting up and carrying on. By my reckoning at the moment, he's only got two penalties so far, but there's a third. But he'll be suffering from one or two bruises. You see now why they need to wear good leather boots and gloves. And, of course, the crash helmet. Yeah, he's got four obstacles that he's failed on so far. Possibly in the trees as well, and he's gone on the dragon's teeth, so at least 100 seconds to add to that 94.8. I make that 194.8. This young man's come a long way, Timothy Martin, to take part in this from Redruth in Cornwall. It's about the longest travelled of all the competitors. He's just 14 as well. It's time to beat up in the top left-hand corner, set by last year's winner, Martin Arden.
And is anyone going to clear these logs properly? Yes! Oh, that's a good one. So Timothy Martin safely through the double log and the hurdle. And negotiating the rabbit run a little bit better than Gavin Cooper just managed. So he's clear so far. And we'll hope that he's going to avoid the problems on the car that our last rider, Gavin Cooper, suffered. This rider is very capable of winning the competition. He was fourth in uh, the British Trials Championship. So uh, he has a lot of skills. And he dived out of the running limbo. I'm not sure why there. He must have been off balance, I think, mate. Yes, it's an only, only uh, eight inch wide. Finally, the plank. gone. Nasty hole there at the top. He got his front wheel in it, but he's. Uh, well, this is uh, this could well take the lead on this first lap. Just stay in there. This is good. Beautiful. This is very good. That's brilliant. That's an excellent ride. 71.3 plus 40 makes 111.3 clearly in the lead. This is Peter Ashmore from Matlock in Derbyshire, whose younger brother David just failed to qualify for the junior final of this year's kickstart. Peter, 14 years old, managing the balance pole very neatly. You can see all the riders are very nervous, with this being the final. Splendidly over the logs, he's clean there. The marshals, incidentally, provided by the YMSA, which is the Youth Motorcycle Sports Association, of which uh, you're president, aren't you, Mick? I am, yes. It's a very good organisation to help the youngsters. CC Yamaha Majesty. And he's having a very controlled ride so far. So far, he's clean. This is the one that's really been causing the problems, and he's straight out of it. 20 seconds, he'll get there. Now, what can he do on the bunny hop? No. He really got the back wheel off the ground there at all. And he stalled it. Very unfortunate there. Well, his elapsed time is longer than Timothy Martin's. What can he do with the dragon's teeth? Don't forget, it is a two-leg final. So there's plenty of time to put right your mistakes on. This is good. Oh, he's so unlucky. So unlucky to take a penalty at the end there. Gets a lot of applause with 60 seconds to add. Makes 145 seconds, but he's in second place at this point. So the second fastest qualifier is this young man, Lansingham, who's 15. He comes from Ramsbottom near Bury in Lancashire. A very good rider indeed, but those lost it straight away at the start. Now that, so what causes that? Well, I think possibly it's the uh, very wet and dirty rear wheels. And it must be completely central on the balance pole. And he's gone the double lock there, he's dropped that outside. So he's got, uh, got it all to do. He's got real problems. You look at his rear tyre there, it's completely blocked. Well, if he restarts this obstacle, gets in through the gate, he shouldn't be penalised. But uh, it's very narrow down there, and he's just blasting his way out. He's taking a 20-second penalty, so he's the first to fail on the rabbit run. And he's got to get back there to find his way into... Oh, and he's dropped it at the top there. Well, a bit of inexperience there, I think. And very nervous, panic. yes. Very nervous. A lot of time elapsed. And another 20 seconds there. So this is a disastrous round for young man. Who must have fancied his chances, I think. He must have thought he had a good chance before this. It's all going wrong for him. There's his time to beat, 111.3. Well, he won't even do that in elapsed time, I don't think. He might. And it's thrown him forward there, so he's out 20 seconds on that. There's 100 seconds, 120 seconds to add to his time there, makes 225.8. Well, this young man, Stephen Hull, who comes from Huntingdon, Cambridgeshire, he was most impressive in the heats, by far and away the fastest qualifier. What can he do with this final course? He's riding the largest bike in the competition, the 250cc Spanish machine, Bull Tackle. 
Very controlled and very neat. He's clear so far. He's been riding since he was seven. He's only 15 now, so this is a very experienced lad indeed. And by my reckoning, he's clear so far. Are we going to see a perfect exhibition of how this course should be ridden? And he's blown the limbo there. He's taken his 20-second penalty. I'm not sure why. I thought he'd have had a go at that, but he has cleaned the limbo. Uh, the uh, bunny hop, rather. Lifting the limbo, he and missed the plank. And this is very fast. Very fast, but he's blasting out of the dragon's teeth. He's got 40 seconds to add to his time, but it's still only 98.1. He's gone into the lead. What a good ride. So the slowest of the first round times was set up by this lad, Lansingham, who is just 15 years old, a Lancashire lad from Ramsbottom near Berry. Of course, now tackled, of course, in the opposite direction. And that dragon's teeth, he's made it look very easy. Beautiful ride. Very well controlled. Tremendous applause, and uh, he's through it. And down there, that hill looks more awkward in this direction, but he's hit the bunny hop. This weather was having a problem before on the limbo. And why you are they see from so there? Trouble, because they have to duck down under the pole, but also stay on that eight-inch wide plank. And that is a difficulty. Well, they've all failed on that, so maybe as a, a pointer for the future, it's perhaps a little bit too hard for these youngsters, eh? Maybe we'll see one somebody do it. Yes, it's possible someone should do it. A lot of thick mud there, and he's got the bike stuck a bit. Call that one the hurdle. And now to the two big logs. But he's doing pretty well. He's only got 40 seconds of fault so far, and he's clean. So the marshal's got nothing to do down there. Up the bank, just the balance pole to go, but his wheels are going to be very muddy. And he's straight off, as you saw there. So 20 seconds there, 60 to add uh, for Lansingham. His total time then, 356.1. Well, there it is, the fast score. 356.1, that's what's got to be beaten by this lad, Gavin Cooper. I suppose if we're realistic, these early starters in the second leg don't have a lot of chance, and he's immediately taken his penalty on the Dragon's teeth. I think we're a little bit nervous about dropping down that bank. Well, it's a steep bank for these youngsters, and I think he missed the gate. Yes, there goes the flag. So he's missed that little hill, 20 seconds there as well. Now you see the problems with the limbo. They have to stay on that plank. And he's going to be the first one to do it. He's there, he's cleaned it. Well done, Gavin. I knew someone would do it. He's riding 156cc Fanti. A lot of mud there. This is a very awkward hole now. And he's got underneath it. In fact, he's moved the log. Now, I'm not sure what the ruling is on uh, something like this, because the obstacle has actually given way under the way he's hit it. So that's going to have to be rebuilt. That, up that the is orbit. a muddy mess down there. A muddy mess. Muddy mess. <laughs> and he just stayed in there, the marshal. Taking a careful look. I'm not sure if there have been any penalties on the hurdle, which he demolished. So that's going to have to be rebuilt before the next one goes. And he's off on the balance pole. So I make it 80 to add there, which makes 369.6. So he's in last place at the moment. Now this lad, Martin Arden, he's got an awful lot of time in hand if he's going to go into the lead, but he's going to have to do a brilliant round if he's to stand any chance of retaining his championship, and he's already in trouble. Now, this hill looks very much more awkward in this direction. It's very difficult to drop down there. Yeah. Failed on the bunny hop. He was actually good on that. But, uh... And again on the limbo. You see how difficult it is. Well, he'll certainly go around quickly. He was very fast on his first uh, leg of this but uh, he's picking up too many penalties to give him much of a chance. And that requires good control because the bank comes very soon after the drop. And that was very neat over the hurdle. Now, is he going to hold it inside those white bits? Yes, he is. 
So this isn't too bad a ride. He's got 60 seconds against him so far. He'll certainly go in the lead, but I doubt if it'll be enough to win the championship. And very neat on the balance pole. So just 60 to add, makes 280.2. Peter Ashmore again from Matlock in Derbyshire, 145 seconds on his first run, the time to beat, 280.2, up there in the left-hand corner. That's what he's got to do to get into the lead. I think you were saying, Mick, earlier that uh, if anyone could win it, this lad could. He's a very capable rider, yes, but after 20 fault there, it's going to be difficult for him. Just staying inside the exit gate there. Quite really slipping away from him, and the bunny hop's gone. Well, so far, a lot of failures on this bunny hop. Now, can he do this? Yes, he's cleaned that. That's good. So, 40 seconds against him so far. His time, you can see, just ticking away there. Combined time for the two legs. Add the penalties to that, you get the total time. It's time to beat in the top left-hand corner. And we're really getting to the nitty-gritty of this competition. Now, he's been failed there on the hurdle, but I didn't quite see why. He must have been outside the markers again. But he's clear on the double log. And the balance pole to finish off. Yes, no feet faults allowed there, so he's OK. That's fine. He's got 60 seconds to add to that, makes 274.1, and he does take the lead. This is Timothy Martin, the young lad from Cornwall, in second place after the first run. Got a lot of time in hand. And managing those dragon's teeth. Oh, he just failed it at the end. Very unfortunate. The back wheel coming off. It was a very good try. Yes, they don't like the bank at all. Well, a good ride from him now, and he must know he's in with a chance. Putting all the pressure on the lads still to come, young Stephen Hole, but he's out, he's out, he's gone out, 20 seconds there. They're having a terrible time with this limbo. That's a nasty crash when they land off the seesaw. Down into the muddy depths he goes. I say he's cleaned that. It's hard to clean anything in that mud. Oh, and he's outside the market there. So 20 seconds against Timothy Martin on the double log. Just the balance log to go. He's done that nicely, so 60 to add to that makes 240.7. He takes the lead. Well, it looks as though this lad just has to keep his bike going and stay in the seat, and he should win the Lombard Tristy Junior Kickstart. The senior division. A lot of time in hand, but he's uh, failed on the Dragon's team, but he did on the first lap as well, so I don't think that'll worry him too much. He has a lot of time in hand. He's certainly test his character. And he fails on the bunny hop. 40 against him already. The time is creeping up. Can he clean this? He put a foot down and he brought it off, so he could be in trouble. He may not be all that cast iron now. 60 seconds to add to that. He's already up to almost 200. That makes his time. His full time's just over 200 now. So Stephen Hole has it all to do still. He can't afford any more mistakes. He's clean. He's clean on the bank. The balance pole. Can he do it? This is getting very tight. If he fails this, he's in trouble, but he's done it. It's a good ride, he's there in 162 seconds, plus 60 makes 222, he's the new champion. So the seniors have completed their final and we have a winner. But the juniors have got to operate over the same course. Well, I think it looks very difficult indeed for them, we just have to see how they fare. Let's go over and see the running order. So here we go with the junior finalists in the order in which they will take on this course. Don't forget, this is just a sudden death ride. They only have one attempt at it, the juniors. Number 23, Darren Snell, who's 11. Nilo Sheen, number 29, he's 10. Wayne Braybrook, number 28, he's 12. Stephen Colley, another 10-year-old, number 35. James Bentley, another 10-year-old, he's number 19. And John Shirt, the fastest of the qualifiers, number 32, who's 11. So this lad, 11-year-old Darren Snell from Burfield Common in Berkshire, he'll have to set the standard 
in this junior division of the Junior Kickstart Finals. Well, these youngsters, I think, have got real problems on this course. It's going to be hard for them. 20 seconds already there for young Darren. Yes, because these are on the miniature machines. And this lad qualified for the final by virtue of pushing his bike over the line with just five seconds to spare. You may remember in the heats, the very first of the junior heats, oh, and he's failed on there. Uh, he crashed after the very last obstacle, spent 30 seconds trying to start his bike, failed to kickstart it, and eventually pushed it over the line and just qualified. So, uh, living by the skin of his teeth, but a uh, pretty good ride so far. To manage the seesaw okay, because all these young riders Jordan was worried about the seesaw. So far, just three sets of penalties. Absolutely identical course to the one which uh, the senior division boys attempted. And he's finishing there with 60 seconds to add to that. That's very good indeed. Makes 136.7. What a good time. Well, the time in the top left corner is a pretty difficult one for this 10-year-old lad, Neil O'Sheen, to follow. Neil, he comes from uh, Rootham in Kent. And the time he's got to get up there and beat would have stood up pretty well in the senior division final. And the 10 years old, all guts, this lad. It's a very small machine. It's a fan pick and it's 75 cc. And he's out of the gate there. He missed the gate. You can see the markers at the bottom of the bank. It's unfortunate for him. And the bunny hop. So he's picking up a lot of penalties. Well, he'll be a proud lad to have reached this final and showing some great skill there. He's going to clean this. Hey! Beautiful ride. Well, that is good. I suppose the smaller bikes help a bit, though. Yes. <laughs> With the smaller wheels and the smaller riders, yes. Well, that showed tremendous balance because we've seen the seniors fail it. It's a very good ride by young Neil, but he's got 60 seconds against him so far. And giving it a bit too much in that mud. Now that is hard work. Look, it's completely stuck in the centre. It's a great shame, but he just hasn't the strength to do it. He might do it here. Oh, the crowd are willing him on. You can hear him shouting him on. Go on, Neil, go on! Well done, lad. But that will have taken something out of him. Well, he's got no penalties on it. And these logs are big and he's little. Oh, this is terrific. Well done, lad. 60 seconds to add, so he won't win this championship. But what a great try. As he comes off there on the balance pole, 80 to add to that makes 181.3, but doesn't he deserve the applause? Wayne Braybrook then on the line. At the same time set by the first lad to go, Darren Snell, 136.7. That's the time he's got to beat. Sudden death, don't forget, this junior final. Just one attempt at it. So these lads really got to pull out all the stops. Wayne is just 12. Comes from Princess Yorkshire, and he's had to ride out of the dragon's teeth. You can see these are very small machines. Just in there, he actually hit the gate with his wheel, but he's... Oh, the flag's up, he penalised him. Bunny hop goes as well, so 60 seconds against him so far. But it looks like he's going to make that. Much easier for these little ones, but it's tremendous balance all the same. Far not providing any problems, nor the seesaw. But all the problems seem to be down at the bottom of this dip. That was nicely written. Very nice, yes. Just gunned it at the right time. Now, can he get back over that one? The marshal watching everything. They're letting nothing go. They're not being gentle and uh, soft with these kids. They're marking it very, very tight. But he is clear on that. 60 seconds against Wayne Braybrook, that's all. He won't take the lead, but he could be in second place if he manages this. Now he's... 
That's very awkward for him. He's in the same sort of position that young Neil was in on the other bowl. The same technique, mate. Well, really, what he should have done is got the front wheel over <laughs> and done it the opposite way. Uh, he's got another 20 to 80 to add to that, makes 183.9, so he's third at the moment. Stephen Colley, one of the youngest two competitors and uh, youngest two qualifiers for the final, just 10 years old and from the Isle of Man. Great traditions of motorbike riding in the Isle of Man. What can he do on this fairly difficult trials course? Well, he's abandoning the Dragon's Teeth, saving his time and attacking the rest of the course. Yes, it looks as though he's going to take a nice, slowly calculated ride around. I seem to remember in the heats he did this, but oh. he falls, he comes out. Now, this is a steep bank, Mick, isn't it? Very, very steep, yes. There's another 20 seconds there. I was going to say in the heats, he uh, did this very slow ride round, but actually his time very nearly won it. But he's picking up penalties all the way here. Seems to have lost a bit of confidence. I think with it being finals day, he is uh, very nervous. Well, I wouldn't fancy riding over it most of these obstacles. He's only 10 years old. That is tremendous. Down into the mud. Now the small bike can it cope with the deep mud this side of the hurdle. It can. Very well ridden, yes. But from these type of competitions, we are trying to uh, bring on another world champion. Well, these youngsters, they, they seem to be having more success than the seniors over the big logs. Very controlled, very good indeed. So far, 80 seconds to add, but he's off there. That'll be 100 seconds for him. The wheel's very greasy. You no, know, he should take the front wheel over. That's it. No. Oh! That was a nasty fall for him. He's all right. Look at the strength they say of the they just Pick themselves up and get on with it. Determination all over his face. Terrific. 109.3 plus 100 makes 209.3. But he's done himself a great deal of credit there. Well, this 10 year old James Bentley, the second fastest qualifier. And I know he's in a very determined mood to do some good here today. 20 seconds straight off on those Dragon's Teeth. We knew they caused the problems. Uh, actually, we thought the senior division lads would get over it better than they did, but these youngsters have had no chance. Well, it's the same for all of them. Oh, I thought he would have done the bunny hop, but apparently not. And he's off on the limbo as well. Well, we've had two successes on this limbo in this junior final better than we had from the seniors, so uh, we really are performing very well indeed. Awkward at the top there, nearly losing it, but uh, he's held it together well. Well, the same position. There seems to be only one place where you can actually guarantee to get through there, Mick, and that's a bit over to the left. Over it? to the left, yes. Whenever they get to the right, it's too deep. He's bogged down there. Bike stopped. I thought he was actually free of it then if he'd slid the bike through. <laughs> Get off the bike and uh, lift it off. I'm sure everyone at home can see the problem there. The bike's wheels just aren't making contact with the ground at all, so until he gets some traction, he can't do anything. Oh, the time ticking away, so... James is going to be out of it as well, and that time that Darren Snell set up in the very first, the first one to go in this junior final is looking very, very safe indeed as the course gets nastier and nastier. He's well, well and truly bogged down there. Absolutely stuck. No chance for James now. 60 seconds to add to this. A really big score coming on. That's the way. Off um, the bike and, and 20 second penalty for coming out the wrong side of the gate. So that was a disaster for him. Why didn't he do that in the beginning? Get off his bike and lift it out. Stuck here on the logs and he's abandoning those as well. This is an absolute disaster for him. His confidence gone. Nerve wracking for these little lads. He's only 10 years old, remember. And off the balance ball. So an awful lot to add. We won't embarrass him with a full score there. 
With a brave try and hard luck. Well, this is the only lad now who can take the crown away from Darren Snell. 11-year-old John Shirt. There's the time, 136.7. We know that the course is muddier and nastier than it was when we started. And he's about all that as well. None of these youngsters have really put in a proper attempt on that uh, dragon's teeth. They all know that they're going to fail it, so they take the penalty and just got on with it. So he's got 60 so far. Well, Darren Snell will be sitting oh, there looking the very happy about all this, because this, for me, was the favourite, John Shirt. Although, uh, there were only three for the one that I thought, and <laughs> none of whom looked as though they're going to. This was the favourite for me also. We'll see how he attempts the, uh, the muddy hole. He's got 80 seconds to add to this. He can't get in. I think Darren Snell has got it. However well John Shirt finishes this off, he is out of it as from now. So John Shirt can't do it, he could well be second. 80 seconds to add to this, it's not good enough, and he's off there. So he'll have another 20 there, 100 seconds to add. So the lad who both Mick and I really rated as the favourite comes in there, 73.9 plus 100, 173.9, it's not enough. So the full list then, the senior winners in first, second and third order, Stephen Hole. He's always looked a winner since the very first ride he made in the opening heat, 222 seconds. Well ahead of Timothy Martin, 240.7. I'm saying well ahead, that's only one fault ahead. So a pretty good victory there for him. Peter Ashmore coming in third in 274.1. And those juniors, well, what a performance they put up. And the slowest qualifier, Darren Snell, turns out the winner with 136.7. John Shirt, who was both mine and Mick Andrews' favourite for this title, 173.9 in second place, and Neil O'Sheen, 181.3. And now we can go over for the presentation of the trophies and the bottles. The of the senior event, big hand for Stephen Hall, the winner. And so, Brian Restrop, director of Lombard Tricity, sponsors of this event, present the trophy to Stephen Hall, the winner of the winner Senior the Division Junior, junior Kickstart. Darren Snell. And the same for young Darren Snell. He was the slowest qualifier, remember, but he won in very fine fashion there. And collects his trophy. And the bottle of, well, it's not champagne, believe it or not. That's actually uh, ginger beer, special bottle of the champagne for Moe the Shandon. And as the celebrations continue, that's it from Junior Kickstart this year. From me and Mick Andrews, we hope you've enjoyed it. Are you going to give me a few lessons, Mick, before uh, next year? I better do, yes. Not on the ride a bit further without falling off. <laughs> Bye for now. Goodbye. On Tuesday on BBC Two, a new series of Tucker's Luck finds our hero one year older but...